Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our family night tonight, our hybrid family night. Um, we wanted to present to you this evening um, some information about our March 15th startup for uh, receiving our students back on campus. And we were super excited about that. And, and uh, so we have a lot of information to cover this evening. And um, we've got a PowerPoint that we're going to review here quickly. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, on the agenda this evening, um, we're going to be covering uh, attestation, um, the start of school, uh, health and safety protocols, uh, classroom procedures, um, our, what our bell schedule looks like, and also uh, we'll be reviewing hybrid instruction. Okay, so um, who's with us this evening? Uh, I'm John Johnson, principal of Yelm High School. We also have with us this evening assistant principal uh, Laura Conklin. Um, and we also have uh, Assistant Principal Zach Suderman and Assistant Principal um, Ali Jacobson. We also have two interns on our staff this year that have also been instrumental in supporting this movement uh, toward hybrid. Uh, interns uh, Amy Stapleton and Aaron Kennelly. And what I want to say about our team before we transition to, into uh, our next slide is that we have been doing a lot of work uh, in preparing to receive our kids. And uh, it's our intent to communicate with you um, as much information as we can about this process, um, let you know all of the, all of the things in, um, in terms of materials that you can have access to. And we'll also seek your feedback um, following tonight's presentation. Also with us um, in spirit tonight, uh, not necessarily with us here in person, um, this is our Yelm High School counselor, counseling team. And uh, Miss Middlebrook uh, is out on maternity, so Mr. Mings is uh, with uh, taking her spot for the remainder of the year. Uh, we also have Miss McCleary, Miss Cove, Miss Little, and then also Miss Williams, who uh, is responsible for our ninth grade uh, team. Um, our counselors are super important to us as they're the, the, the gatekeepers to supporting students for credits, uh, getting classes, um, supporting their social emotional needs, and uh, op keeping open the lines of communication. So when students have I issues or, or need support, they're always there for us. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our first uh, presenter tonight, uh, talking about attestation. Yeah, hi, good evening, uh, Yelm uh, families. Again, Zach Suderman here. Before we get started on the wellness screening, I just wanna say a couple uh, notes here. Um, the the question and answer, the chat is open, so feel free to drop questions in that. Um, we will answer them as uh, they are, if they are relevant to the, the, the topic that's being covered at that moment, um, but all questions will get answered. Um, this is, there's a lot of information coming to you tonight, and I, that's the whole purpose of this, right, is to just uh, be as communicative as we can tonight to, to the community, make sure everybody has a sense of what's happening on March, uh, March 15th. And Along those lines, uh, I'm gonna use wellness screening and health attestation interchangeably. They're uh, largely the same thing. Um, I, I don't know that, that um, everybody, anybody's really unfil unfamiliar with the questions that get asked for wellness screenings, um, but I wanna talk about how our process is gonna work to get kids on campus and to make sure that they're not symptomatic um, and that they haven't been exposed um, recently. So there's three options that we're going to have for, for completing a wellness screening. And the first is by far the most efficient and the one that we're strongly encouraging families uh, to access. And it's, it's, we're calling it the fast pass option where uh, either a, a parent guardian or a student completes an attestation and is able to uh, show evidence. And that evidence is this green check mark here um, and if they're able to show evidence on a mobile device, um, that is their fast pass um, um, to getting on campus. Um, if that's not an option, option two is where a parent or guardian completes it either um, at home uh, prior to a, kid, a student coming on campus. Um, and when they either get off the bus or they arrive on campus, um, they move past the fast pass option. I'll, I'll talk about the logistics of what that looks like on campus in, in future slides. Um, but they, they actually go to a staff member and a staff member checks Skyward to make sure that um, the attestation has been completed and then they can access campus. 
Uh, the third option is when neither of those are completed. So Skyward is not accessed uh, for the wellness screening. A student comes on campus, um, uh, moves to a third station where we actually do a verbal and a temperature check um, and do the attestation uh, right there on the spot. Um, you, you'll notice that the first is the fastest, the second takes a little bit longer, um, requires a staff member to access Skyward, and then the third is by far the longest um, of the three. And so as we're, as we're moving kids onto campus, potentially 600 um, a day, we want to make sure that we do this efficiently, and so that's why we're strongly encouraging that, that families access the fast pass option. Let's talk a little bit more about how to do that. Um, the next few slides kind of detail what, what this looks like in Skyward. And there's uh, three bars there, which is the menu option. If you click on the three bars, that'll open up uh, menus and you wanna look for the wellness screening option. It's there in the middle. Clicking on wellness screening, that'll move you to next screen. Um, the, the, clicking on the wellness screening will then move you to uh, the two important questions that um, we need to ask in order, in order to get on campus. And the first involves uh, symptoms uh, that st your student may be experiencing in the last 24 hours. And the second uh, require, or involves potential exposure um, that may have happened in, in the last uh, 14 days. It's super important here that uh, honesty be the only policy. Okay, if you can honestly answer no to both of those questions, uh, that'll screen you, uh, screen you on campus. If, if you're not able to honestly answer no to those things, you'll receive, um, you'll receive the red X. And the red X is not, I mean, it's not bad. Um, all it's saying is that, you know, at this time, uh, we, should, we think that you should probably stay home um, until we can, we can address either the symptoms or the potential exposure. Okay, we want kids to come on campus absolutely 100% and we wanna make sure we're doing it safely um, and can maintain uh, this process of having kids come on campus. Okay, so let's talk about the various entry points that we're gonna have students arriving. Um, they're they're gonna be restricted to two funnel points. Uh, funnel point number one is uh, along the the main entrance uh, typically, or this will be for, uh, for students that are walking, uh, are riding bikes, or driving cars, uh, parking in the student parking lot, and then funneling to that main front entrance. That's, that's gonna be uh, uh, the wellness screening station number one. Uh, the second wellness screening will be only for students uh, riding the bus. And, um, and they'll go through the bus loop and unload there. And there will be some barricades that, and some signage that funnel uh, your student to uh, the wellness screening station number two. Okay, so, um, so you can kind of see the schematic here of our main building and uh, the gym and the, and the two screening stations that I've talked about. Um, as, you're, as you're coming on campus, it's important that we maintain physical distancing. So that's six feet. And I think your, your, your student's gonna hear six feet probably a hundred times a day from, from the adults and, and the staff on campus here. It is very important um, that they can put their arms out and not reach out and touch anybody. Um, they'll also wanna, as they're coming through the screening station, of course, it's, it's mask up. Okay, a mask up and it's over the nose and we're starting, we're, we're making that a habit as we're bringing kids on campus. Okay, so um, screen station one again, um, we'll, uh, we'll open those at 7 a.m. Um, as soon as you screen in through one of those three options, uh, you, you're able to access campus, okay? Uh, the comments will be open. Uh, Ms. Jacobson will talk more about what that looks like, and, and we actually have some uh, uh, photos of what that looks like. Um, but it, it's super important that your son or your student um, come through one of those two funnels before 
uh, going going to class. And we're going to have some protocols in place to make sure that you know kids aren't uh, are coming in and going straight straight to classrooms. Um, it's very important that they funnel through and, and get checked off, get their wellness screening checked prior to accessing classroom. Okay, and so these are the three options that we talked about. As soon as you come through the main office, uh, there will be an offshoot for fast track. Um, that's the green check mark. Uh, that's again, the quickest. Um, if, if that is not available, they'll funnel to a, a secondary station where um, a staff member will check to see check on Skyward to see if it's been completed. Um, and if that's not an option, they'll of course funnel to the third option, which is the, the verbal and temperature check option. Same thing's gonna happen in the bus loop. So same schematic, uh, just a different location. One of those two locations, again, super important that our students, um, and it's important to our staff as well, that, that we make sure that um, we, can, we can reasonably ensure that to our staff that our kids are coming on campus are doing so safely and healthily. Okay, and so that's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass the uh, baton here um, to, I believe it's Mr. John Johnson. Yep, thank you, Zach, uh, really appreciate that. Um, this is our bell schedule. Um, it's not unlike um, bell schedules that you haven't seen before. Um, we are going to continue with our, our, our three period day. Um, as you can see here, uh, as, as we are now, we start at 725. Um, the difference in this schedule compared to what we have now is that we're going to embed our tornado time into first period. And what does that mean? When first period gets over or fourth period uh, gets over, students will stay in that period uh, from 9.15 until 9.30 and they will access their tornado time teacher through their Chromebook. Um, it is a benefit to us to reduce the number of uh, passing times during the day. And so we chose to um, support not only um, uh, having reduced numbers of passing time, but also to give us that, that boost that we need to um, appropriately access tornado time so that students can have access to social emotional um, supports. So they can work on the high school and beyond plan uh, and receive additional information uh, beyond those two things. Um, what you'll see also on this schedule is that we do have two lunches uh, built around second and fifth period. And so our first lunch, uh, I'll, I'll just go to second period starts at 935. Um, and then at 1035, uh, we will break. Um, and uh, lunch will be from 1035 until 1105. And then students would return to that period, um, second period or fifth. And then um, our second lunch uh, begins at 1125 until noon. And um, once that time period is over, then we transition back to um, our final period of the day following a brief passing time. Um, our, our last period of the day um, starts at 12 o'clock and ends at 1.50. Um, what you can see on the schedule also is that um, our Wednesday uh, will maintain um, its current um, situation where it's our real day. Uh, so the remote education um, and learning day, um, the times here have not, ha have not changed um, at all in terms of the students being able to access their uh, history, math, world language, CTE, science, um, ELA, uh, PE or health or other electives. Um, and there is only the one lunch on that day. So let's go to the next slide, please. So hybrid instruction, um, I know we know that um, families have received information about the method of instruction um, that students will be receiving um, if they're on um, an A day, a B day or remote only. Um, and similarly to the previous schedule, you can see that on Mondays, we have periods one, two, and three. Um, Tuesdays, periods four, five, and six. Uh, Wednesdays are the real day. And um, then on Thursdays and Fridays, uh, it's a repeat of Monday, Tuesday. So um, 
We know that for A group, um, they will be in person on the Monday and Tuesday and working remotely on um, Thursdays and Fridays. And B group, B group will be the opposite of that. Um, pretty straightforward as it's shown here. And then our remote students um, will access their classes um, each day of the week um, as they are now. Um, it's really important uh, for our students uh, to know that we need them to bring their district issued Chromebook um, and their cord on the campus each day. Um, we will be making available um, uh, uh, chargers in the classroom, power strips, um, so to speak, um, if a student does need their computer charged. Um, but again, the, the emphasis is on the district issued Chromebook in order to be able to access um, those things that are, are available to students in their classrooms. Um, if there are questions, uh, the, the, the ninth grade students have um, a laptop that they will bring um, to, to school each day. So, um, and that was also district issue. But again, the important thing here is to bring that each and every day. Okay. Health and safety. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Uh, our, our motto or our theme going into hybrid is let's stay united to keep us in hybrid. And part of that is ensuring our safety and our, our health for our students and our staff. And so doing this, we put in place um, a lot of procedures that we're all going to be following. For hand sanitizing, we have stations that are in the entrance of, of both wellness screening areas, as well as in various locations around the building. And there is at least one in every single classroom. Uh, students are also welcome to wash their hands uh, in the restroom at, at any time of the day that they would like to. Um, we, we believe that clean hands in, clean hands out will keep us all uh, healthy and safe and, and as germ-free as we possibly can. Again, we mentioned the mask wearing several times through, through this, and it is important that your student is wearing a mask, that it does cover their nose and their mouth. Uh, if, if for some reason they don't have one, we do have them available. If one breaks throughout the day, or it gets wet or, or they feel that they need another one, we do have masks available with, within the building and within the classrooms. So that, that will always be available. We do want our students to feel comfortable and feel safe and have access to extra masks if, if needed. Uh, again, the physical distance, the six feet, you're gonna hear that a lot. Students will hear that a lot. We have signs posted everywhere, reminders, uh, but we will also be reminding students as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a different slide. Uh, cleaning, cleaning is ongoing. It will happen at the end of every period. So students coming in will come into a clean room as well as we'll have uh, cleaning happening in the evenings. Uh, lunch, for some students like my son, that's his favorite part of the day, which is, which is lunch. Uh, we will have um, lunch available for all students. It is it still continues to be free. As students are dismissed from their classes, they will funnel into the commons. We will have three different locations where students can pick a grab and go meal. So they're just gonna walk by, grab it, and they're going to see, sit in their individual um, seat. They have a desk and a chair, and there is proper six feet distancing um, from, from the other spaces. Uh, so they will have a seat. They are able to take their mask off to eat. That, that is important to do that. So they will take their mask off to eat. But once they're finished, they must put it back on. They will also have to remain in their seat uh, while they're in the commons. If they feel that they want some fresh air, they're welcome to go outside. A lot of our students do go to an area that we call the circle, where they like to hang out and talk. They're free to do that, but then again, we will be doing the six feet um, reminder for them as well. Uh, if student wants to bring their lunch, that is perfectly fine. And we also have a few microwaves available um, for use. Uh, we do also have, you know, markers showing them where they're supposed to stand to also maintain uh, physical distance for that. And going, still talking about physical distancing. Um, 
we have markers on the hallway floor with arrows and stickers reminding them which direction to go in the hallway. We also have them um, outside as well as you can see in the pictures so students know which direction uh, that they need to be walking. We also have desks that are in the classroom that are physically distanced as well. And here's an example of one, uh, what it looks like in the classroom. So students hopefully will feel comfortable and will feel safe um, with their surroundings and with people around them and with, with the safety uh, protocols that we have in place. Uh, students will be reminded that as they're entering every classroom, there is the hand sanitizer that they will uh, use that and go directly to their to their assigned seat uh, and will remain there during class. And then as they exit, they can also use the hand sanitizer. Again, going back to the clean hands in, clean hands out. Um, that way we, we are all um, maintaining um, the best uh, wellness that we can uh, for our students and, and our staff. And that is it for this portion. All right, Laura, I believe you're up now. Um, no, I, I want to uh, just to say that um, thank you for the questions in the chat. Um, we're answering them um, as we go along. And some are answered um, in our, our presentation as well. So keep the questions coming. Um, it's really good for us to see and, and understand what, what, you're, what you're thinking and what you, um, um, you know, those questions that are, that are really important for us to, to be able to respond to. Um, this slide is representative of kind of a, a summary of a little bit of what Allie has been talking about in the course sack. And so it's, um, if your student is feeling ill, what should we do? So we've identified uh, basically two options to, to consider here. Um, option one, uh, if a student is feeling ill, keep them home as we do now. If the student is feeling ill, but is able to participate in their classroom, um, students are encouraged, encouraged to attend virtually. Um, and then as students um, are, do stay home because they feel ill and, but are able to participate, they would be counted as present. The second option in this area, um, as we look at it, is still keeping the student home, um, but they're not able to or unable to attend class virtually. It's at this point we need the parents to reach out and communicate with the school and to report the absence. Um, students will be counted as excused. And so to keep this really simple, uh, there's not a lot of trickeration to this or trickery or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, there, these two options are pretty straightforward and, and that we, do, we would ask you to follow. The next slide that we have here is related to um, specific COVID-19 information. Um, I think what we wanna say here is that as, as as families have more and more questions about COVID and um, you know, what, what are some of the guidelines that we are following, um, I think I would say that we're following the district um, and Department of Health and Thurston County Public Health um, guidelines as it pertains to the safety of, of your students and the safety of, of everybody here on campus. Um, we understand that from time to time there'll be inter, uh, incidental passing of students and so, which is not considered close contact because people are moving. Um, and so, but um, if you were, if you take the, a moment to review the COVID-19 information on the district website, um, you'll also be able to receive uh, in this presentation, a link to the Department of Health, which talks about COVID-19 exposure. And then just the communication plan from Thurston County Health. Um, I think these are really good resources for families to, to rely on. Um, if you if you read the information and you still have questions, of course, please reach out to us, um, and we'll we'll get you guided in, in the in the right direction. So, these are great resources. All right. Well, I am so excited to be able to talk about let's stay united to keep us in hybrid. So that motto was actually created kind of organically by one of our teacher leaders, Jean Bankhead, in the middle of a meeting. And the, the reason why we like it so much is it's so important for us just to think about we are a community of people that want to be in school. 
We want, we want our students to be in school. We want them to do so safely. And so all of the things that you're hearing about as far as the, the, the safety and health measures and the processes and the systems that are in place, it's a lot to remember. And it would be very overwhelming for our students to just hear this recording and for us to be done with it. That would maybe potentially cause some anxiety. And so what we want to do is we want to proactively teach these concepts and systems to our students over and over and over again. I think you heard Mr. Suderman and Ms. Jacobson both say um, six feet, six feet. I know Mr. Johnson said the same thing. We want students to be able to um, recite those things back to us so that it just becomes a part of their behavior. We know this is kind of a strange time we're living in, um, but in order for us to do everything safely, we need them to follow those guidelines. So just think all of these policy structures, it's all around just keeping us united, um, staying united to keep us in hybrid. So what you're seeing right now is a, a, a classroom matrix. Every single classroom will have a poster size matrix that's available in their classroom. And essentially it's reminding students of what the expectation is for them while they're in that space. So what does a ma the mask wearing look like? What's the expectation there? What does hand hygiene mean? What does uh, physical distancing mean? And we're trying to really use the word physical distance, not social distance. We're social be beings, six feet of distance. Um, what are the cleaning procedures, right? So when Ms. when Ms. Jacobson talked about clean hands in and clean hands out, in addition to that, we're adding um, some, some cleaning and sanitizing that happens at the end of every single period. And then of course, we wanna reference the health check, which is something that we want every student we require every student to complete as they enter our campus. These are non-negotiable. So that's really, really critical. Um, and, and it's very critical for us to follow these things so that we can stay in hybrid um, and get to, to interact as, as a family in an in-person setting. So your student will, will have this matrix available visually and it will be a lesson that's taught. Um, components of this will be taught uh, in the days kind of leading up to our, our start on March 15th and 18th, depending on the group that you're in. We also have um, on the next slide, kind of a school-wide matrix. So as you think about mask and hand hygiene and distancing and cleaning, what does that look like in each of our set settings? As we enter a room, uh, a classroom workspace, as students exit a room, going into a restroom, right? And there's signage everywhere. And so we want it to be so clear that students um, have no option but to follow it because it's right in front of their face. What does lunch look like? And what does it look like when they're outside? We know that students are gonna be sitting for long periods of time. So what do things like mask breaks look like? What's the process for that? So that our students are safely engaged in, the, in those kind of experiences. You can see on the next slide too, um, what our process is for teaching those school-wide expectations. Um, we have, it's called our multi-tiered systems of support and behavior team. Uh, it's a very fancy team, but essentially it's, it's a group of teacher leaders, administrators, um, other staff members, including an office professional. And we also have students and we get together and we come up with what is critical information and how are we going to deliver it? So you can see kind of a, a graphic of what it's going to look like for your student to learn about all of these processes so that they have a clear understanding of what's expected. You can see too um, on a Thursday and Friday, the 11th and 12th, as we kind of lead right into the weekend before, that each teacher is going to be personalizing that matrix for their classroom. So depending on what their classroom looks like, this is exactly what it looks like to come into the classroom to wear a mask, um, to potentially have a mask break, um, what where the sanitation, um, hand sanitizer is and where it's gonna be located. So your student should know exactly what to expect in each classroom and across every school setting. Again, we wanna be as pro proactive and clear as possible. So you and your student just focus on the learning piece. Um, the last thing that, that's kind of a, a, an exciting development beyond teaching our whole school all of these expectations, including a really cool video that was produced that we're gonna show here at the end um, is on the next slide, uh, we have something called our, our Fresh Fest on Tour. So if you are a parent or guardian of a freshman and you've been um, kind of aware of these various campaigns that we've had for our freshmen, um, I get to supervise ninth graders and I get to work with some really amazing dynamic teachers across campus. 
and really dynamic freshman delegates, so student leaders. And so we've had these themes of Fresh Fest uh, throughout the school year. We are going to have an opportunity for your student to sign up for a tour. Uh, so I just sent out a Skyward Messenger, so everyone should have in their email uh, this similar flyer. Um, any student that's going to be coming on campus, a ninth grade student coming on campus in hybrid, will be able to sign up for a 45 minute tour. So really, really critical that you sign up. There's a sign up link here, um, but it's also in your email and we'll also have it on our website. And um, in that tour, they'll be in a group of no more than five students. Uh, they will be, uh, they'll go through the process of getting dropped off. They'll get to practice with an, what attestation looks like. They'll go into the commons, get to see what the commons look like. They'll go to an assigned location where their, their name will be. We'll do everything very safely. And then they'll get to go and see what campus looks like. I think when you really think about it, our freshmen have not been on our campus. And so we want them to experience what it's like in a safe environment and for them to kind of practice all of these um, systems we're talking about kind of um, up front. So we're letting our freshmen uh, get on campus early. So again, this is a really exciting opportunity. Please take advantage of if your student's going to be on our campus in hybrid, that you sign up for one of, of the dates uh, listed there and, and it will give them an opportunity really to experience um, just some of, the, some of the systems that we'll have in place and, and also get to meet a few people. Mr. So, Hansen, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, Laura. Would you like sure. to just do a quick reminder about the schedule for Thursday and Friday, the 11th and 12th, since there's a change in schedule? Great idea. Yeah, that's, uh, that was one of my closing remarks here, but I'll, I'll go ahead and address it now. So Thursday and Friday of next week, um, we do have early dismissal on these days. Um, we uh, are providing our teachers with the opportunity uh, in their PLCs and um, with their teams to be able to, as Laura had indicated earlier, identify those things that would be specific to their to their teams and also to their individual classrooms. So they will have uh, about two and a half hours each day on, on, on the 11th and then again on the 12th as we prepare to move into the weekend um, that uh, they have that, that uh, extra time to uh, support their their hybrid classroom needs. And so uh, school will be dismissed on the 11th and 12th at 11.20. Um, students will be able to get their lunch on those days. Um, and we want we, we encourage them to 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 eat them here on campus as they're, they're not allowed to be eating them on the buses. So um, even though students are being dismissed at 1120, uh, buses will take them off campus at 1135. So Terry, thank you for that reminder. Absolutely. There are quite a few questions also in the chat, just if, uh, if your student is new to the school and they haven't been on campus, we are working with our counselors on what the process will look like around um, your student getting to experience campus and kind of know what they're doing. So there'll be more information to come if your student is new but is not a ninth grade student. Um, and finally, if you did sign up for a time, um, unless the time is full, your confirmation is the time that you chose. Uh, and so whatever time you signed up for, uh, that would be the time that you come. Uh, we will do our best to communicate back out with you. Um, but unless there's a conflict, then make sure that you show up right, um, right at the beginning of that time. So um, a, about a week ago, week and a half ago, all the weeks are starting to blend together. Um, Allie Jacobson um, Amy, and Amy Stapleton, who is one of our interns and a leadership teacher, um, really worked uh, diligently to put together this video so this is, we're calling it kind of the March, uh, March 4th into hybrid actually, because your student tomorrow, which is Mar March 4th, um, hence we're, we're really into mottos and nifty names here. Um, they're going to be able to see this. And so essentially we're gonna play this. You're gonna be able to see kind of everything that we talked about and what it looks like with students. And so we're really excited about this welcome to hybrid video. It's also available online. And obviously there'll be a recording tonight um, where you can continue to watch it. Um, again, your student will be watching this in their classroom starting tomorrow as well. Welcome to Yelm High School. Hey, Yelm High School Tornadoes. Welcome, Mr. Johnson here, your principal. 
want to welcome you back to school. Uh, it won't be long before we are all seeing each other here on campus, uh, socially distanced, of course. Um, it's been a full year since we've all been together. And for some of us who have not been on campus at all, our, our new students to Yelm High School or our new freshmen from this year uh, who have not yet been on campus, um, we are super energized and excited that we're going to be able to see you here shortly. Um, Today, several of our Tornado Leadership students uh, took some time to put together um, a brief video for you outlining some of the safety protocols and procedures that we'll all have to adhere to um, as we prepare to come into our hybrid opportunity here on campus. So uh, please know that together we are all in this together and that we all need to stay united as we move into hybrid. Okay, so enjoy the video. Uh, there are a lot of good uh, safety protocols and procedures that we need to follow. And again, we're looking forward to seeing you here on your Tornado campus real soon. Go Tornadoes, graduate Yelm. We are excited for moving to hybrid instruction. When we follow these simple rules, school is a safe experience for everyone. Before entering the building, each morning you will fit, need to fill out the attestation using the Skyward app on your phone. If you are not able to use the Skyward app, a form will be available for you to fill out. We will have two entry points on our campus, one outside the gym for students who ride the bus and a second one in front of the main op office for car rides and bike rides. This is also where the wellness screening takes place. We will have three options for students to verify or complete a wellness screening with a staff member. Option one, fast pass. Show evidence on a mobile device that the Skyward wellness screening has been completed. Option two, Skyward check. Get verification from a staff member that the Skyward wellness screening has been completed. Option three, verbal wellness screening. A wellness screening is completed by a staff member with follow-up communication made to a parent slash guardian. As students pass through the funnel, they will be expected to maintain social distancing, wear face coverings, or additional masks will be on hand for students in need and sanitize their hands. Once students pass through the wellness screening process, they will have to access campus. Free grab-and-go breakfast will be available in the commons area. Students will be directed to their first class at 720, with class starting at 725. Both funnels will be open from 7 o'clock a.m. to 730 a.m. Students arriving after 7.30 are required to check in at the front office to verify or complete a wellness screening prior to going to class. Please be patient and give yourself and everyone else time. If you arrive early, we will have a waiting area for you. Student parking will only be available in the main parking lot. The back parking lot will no longer be available for students. They are reserved for staff only. When outside, a mask is required covering your nose and mouth. Follow the arrows and signs throughout the campus. You will see arrows pointing in the right direction in the hallways and stairwells for you to follow. Restrooms will have a max capacity. It is important to look at the sign posted outside of each restroom to ensure social distancing and not overcrowd. If the restroom is at a max capacity, wait outside the door for your turn. Also, please follow proper hand washing. When entering a new space, make sure you use hand sanitizer that is available. They are located in hallways, classrooms, commons, and other shared spaces. While entering the classroom, maintain social distancing, sanitize your hands, and go to your assigned seat. Sanitizing wipes will be available for students to access. However, workstations and desks are sanitized at the end of each period and before school starts. You will not be allowed to eat in class, but you can bring a closed water bottle and bottle fillers are available throughout the campus. When you come to school, remember to bring your charged Chromebook, the charging cord and headphones. If you're not on campus, you'll log into your classes at your usual times, so you'll still have each of your classes two days a week. Before you leave the classroom, you will stand up next to your desk and your teacher will spray disinfect it on your desk. You will be dismissed from the front of the classroom to the back of the classroom. Throw away any garbage from your workstation as you leave the classroom. Sanitize on your way out of the classroom while maintaining six feet of distance. Sharing materials is discouraged, but if you need if needed for a lesson, we have proper sanit sanitation procedures we will follow. It is always best to use hand sanitizer before and after using shared equipment. 
At lunch, you'll pick up your sack lunch and find an individual desk in the commons. Once there, you can remove your mask and eat. But when you're done, put your mask back on, pack up your trash and throw it away. If you bring your own lunch and need to heat it up, microwaves are available, but keep in mind you'll have to socially distance and be patient while waiting. You are able to stay seated to talk to friends around you, or you can go back outside. But remember to keep your mask on if you're not actively eating, and maintain six feet, even when outdoors. You're not permitted to go to your car during lunch. Social circles clumping on campus present additional opportunities for the spread of COVID-19 and will be discouraged from occurring in unstructured spaces at unstructured times. When class ends at 1.50 p.m., students will be encouraged to exit the building and depart campus if they are walking, riding, or driving. Students that are riding buses will report directly to their buses for departure. Finally, new to our campus this year is the security vestibule. All visitors will be directed to sign in to the main office via the vestibule. Please follow signs to find it. You might be familiar with the old wooden double doors, but now we will direct visitors to the red single door that is the entrance to the vestibule. Once there, you'll notice that masks are required on our campus and there is a small button to buzz you in. You'll have to show your ID to this button so that the office professionals can let you in the front door. Hi, Mr. Johnson, I'm here to see the counselor, please. Okay. Thank you. Come on in. As you can see, our we have a fabulous leadership group. Um, special thanks to um, Amy Stapleton and, and Allie for supporting uh, the video along with Laura and, and Zach as well. Uh, I would be remiss before I left um, this opportunity tonight to give out a, a special shout out to Terry Pablo, um, who does a lot of work here, uh, not only in Yelm Community Schools, but also at Yelm High School. And we definitely benefit from her uh, knowledge and wisdom about uh, communication and how to uh, best structure um, opportunities to get messages out on a, on a, to all families. Um, before we go, I do want to say that, um, you know, next Friday uh, is one year um, since we have all, uh, we're once on campus um, as a school and uh, uh, we're really feeling fortunate and, and blessed and awesome uh, to experience um, March 15th coming up where we can uh, receive our students and uh, be among them, um, socially distanced, but still among them, get to see a portion of their faces and um, get to hear their voices, um, not behind a screen. And so we're really looking forward to that. Um, so uh, with that, um, I just would like to say, if you need access to any of the materials that we have presented tonight, um, please access our district website. Um, if you have questions about uh, some of the information that, that we have put out here today, um, and uh, we've replied to those questions and you still have more questions, please reach out to us. Um, we're here for you and we certainly want to be able to um, have families feel as comfortable as possible as uh, you release your kids back to us on March 15th um, uh, when we begin our hybrid process, okay? Um, with that, um, I hope you have a great evening. Um, please tell a friend tonight what you saw. Please tell families of the positive things that are happening here at Yelm High School as we prepare this hybrid experience. Please tell um, your friends to tell a friend um, that uh, we're here for, for our community and um, we only have the, the, the best interest of your child's safety. Um, and uh, it's just for the safety of all of us that we'll follow and uh, abide by the uh, different guidelines that we have in order to uh, be able to come back to school. 
Okay, so with that, I want to I want to thank our crew this evening. Um, they've done a, a great job of preparing not only our, our for our freshmen to come on campus. Uh, we have a way to bring our visitors on campus through virtual tours, and um, uh, we have a very strong team here, and, and we're really looking forward to um, having all of our kids back on campus. Okay, so with that, I want to say have a great evening.